Cold soup on a hot summer day can be a quick, refreshing treat. Here to share a recipe for beet gazpacho are two of our favorite cooking instructors. We have Betty Ann Donegan, and Stephanie's not here, but we have Jackie Knoll instead. Yeah, Jackie Knoll. Where's Stephanie? Um, Your my, partner in crime. My, my granddaughter is at a swim meet. Okay. She made some sort of special time, and so she got to do this swim meet. So All she's right. up in Wesleyan today swimming. Well, make sure you tell Stephanie we miss her. I will. But I Jackie, will, I you will. are a, a student of Betty Ann's for years. For many, many years. I've known Betty Ann since she was a young person. Oh. And we've grown together. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. And tell me a little bit about the classes. They're fun. They're hands-on. They're the best part of my life. Uh, wow. wow. I'm telling you, I look forward to every single class. Betty Ann is a wonderful teacher, mm -hmm. as well as um, a wonderful person. Sure. And we learn a lot. We eat a lot. We And we bond a lot. Sounds like a great time. Yeah. All right. What are we going to make today? Well, this is a recipe. This is a, a summer soup. And it's, it's gazpacho was a Spanish um, soup that everybody knows it's made with cucumbers and tomatoes and I just wanted to do something a little different. I saw a recipe for gazpacho and I tried it and it was I didn't like it. It was it was too too strong and I didn't so like you it. So improvised. Yeah, so I, I did I, I tried it with all different things. I tried it with uh, onions and I tried garlic, I tried it with shallots and then I tried putting buttermilk into it. I tried putting then I put decided that I make a beet salad everybody really liked and it had gorgonzola in it. I've had that once or yep. twice, right? So I, I thought I just take the beet salad, throw it into the processor and that make soup out of it and that's basically what I'm doing. Oh, so these are, these are cooked beets. Now these are canned beets, but you could also use fresh beets and roast them. But in the summertime, that's yeah, turn the know. oven on. It's yeah, really so hot. it's just I I tried it with the fresh beets. It really isn't that much different, okay. and for the difference in the time. So for the summer, much I would easier. definitely use the canned beets. And this is the, the, the rest of the ingredients: there's a little mustard, a little bit of shallot, there's pepper, and a little tiny bit of salt, and there's gorgonzola cheese. That's all in here. Okay. And there's sherry vinegar. And I want to just talk about the sherry vinegar. So this is going to go into the processor. And we're going to puree this. Now we're going to put some water in, but you can't do that until after the, the food is smooth. Because if you have too much liquid, mm -hmm. the processor doesn't make everything liquefied. Oh. The big pieces will go to the bottom, the water will come to the top, and there, nothing else will get pureed. So we're, we're going to do this first and then add the liquid to dilute it, but not until the beets are smooth. Because otherwise right. you'll have big chunks of beets. We don't want that. We don't want that. We want this to be smooth. Now this is sherry vinegar. Now, sherry is a fortified wine. Okay. It's a Spanish. It's, it's the Spanish people are, are the ones that are really famous for sherry. So this is a very nice Spanish sherry vinegar. It's a little milder than balsamic. It's mm -hmm. aged the way balsamic is aged, but it's milder than balsamic. Okay. If you didn't have this, you could use a, a white balsamic, which is milder than a dark balsamic, or a white wine vinegar. Okay. So, but this gives it a nice flavor. How does that look? Oh, I smell it it's already. Along. Okay. Great. Give it another little whir. Now Jackie's also an artist. Oh, how wonderful! So she, we've been on. She's been on many, many trips with me. And really, where have you guys gone? Give me some examples. Oh, let me turn this off. Sure. <laughs> where have we gone? Oh, uh, we've gone to France. We've gone to Italy. We've gone to Spain. We went to California to the wine, the wine country. Um, we've been to all over Italy. We've been, I think, six times. We've been twice to, to the Amalfi Coast. Yeah. Oh, how wonderful! Once to Tuscany. Yeah, we've been to Venice. We've been to like Como. Um, we went to Barcelona, we went to the Costa del Sol, we've been to Great. Provence. We, now this fall we're going to Paris. So you guys learning to cook on these trips? Yes, yeah. really? we yes. have classes. There's always a chef. We, we always have a chef that does local foods and then we take classes and then when I come home I teach the classes to my other students that didn't come on the trip. Got it, okay. They, oh, the the students vote on three or four recipes that they like the best and that's what I do when I come home. Then I have to of course translate. Sometimes the ingredients are different. Sure. Sometimes a lot, of things, get, sure. a lot of things are different, so I have to translate all that, and then I work out the recipes. One time, um, I, the recipe he, the fellow, the chef gave me was, was, you start with 50 pounds of flour. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, it's things, it's things like that that you have to sort of deal with. Yeah, all right. So, so this, we're just going to add some water to this now. See how this is now smooth? Now Jackie's going to put in some water. Okay. And it's going to thin it out. And that's all it takes. Everything in the processor, chop Pretty it up. Pretty easy, not so bad. Really, really, really simple. And if, if you roasted the beets, they would you would have to chill them because okay. because this is a cold soup. Got it. So you could you could eat this right away, but you could also make it and then chill it. Okay. How many people is that going to serve? This There's serves eight. Okay. And this is a, this is a small martini glass, and this is considered tapas. Okay. Now, tapas means you have a lot of different things, and you have a small amount of each one. And tapas is a word that was, um, it's a Spanish word, and it means to cover. Because what they did was, when people were having their drinks, and, the, and they had these little black flies that would get into their drinks, 
The waiters started putting dishes on top of the glasses. Is that the origin of the word? Yeah. No and then, And then they took, because the dish looked kind of plain, mm -hmm. they put some little bits of food, like maybe olives or some vegetables or something, on top of the dish. And now it's... I get it. It makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Small plates. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So these, this is going to look really nice in the uh, martini glasses, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's not supposed to be a big serving. It's supposed to be just a small a serving. Line. So sure. Jackie's going to pour it into the... We really can't pour it out of the Cuisinart, so she's going to pour it into the measuring cup. All and, then right. and she's going to decorate it a little bit. Now we have some creme fraiche for a garnish. Ooh, that'll be nice. Creme fraiche is just heavy cream that has a culture added to it, and then it just sits and it gets thick. A pretty little dollop. It's very, it's very refreshing. Yeah, it's very, very refreshing. All right, well, uh, we're going to taste this at the end of the show. We'll see how they look right at the end. But I want to thank you both for coming here. Jackie, it's nice to have you. Thank you so much. This was great <laughs> fun. All right. And, of course, the recipe will be on WTNH.com. Up next, the Pete Herger Band performs on Stage 8. Don't go anywhere.